How have you traumatized your parents? Here's my story. It begins far away from my parents, deep in the woods. I was 18 years old. As summer came to a close, I went on a week-long hiking trip with my girlfriend. We went off the grid, many miles from civilization. There were no designated campsites, running water, etc. We were roughing it. Being young and randy, we wanted to have our share of fun adult times. So I bought a sizable stash of prophylactics. Of course, there were no garbage cans in the middle of the woods. When the deed was done, I had to put the used wang covers into a Ziploc baggie in my backpack. By the end of our week in the sweltering August sun, the baggie was full and funky. The trip went well. I returned to my parents' house exactly one day before I had to leave for my sophomore year at college. I was also a ridiculous slob. So, using my patented packing style, I hastily dumped my backpack's contents into my bedroom closet, picked through the mess, took what I needed, and left the rest. Yeah, I forgot about the baggie. But someone else found it. No, not my parents. My dog. Basically, my parents came home one day to find used prophylactics spread all over the living room. Yeah. Apparently, my dog had found the baggie, but he didn't just sniff it or eat it on the spot or whatever. No, he took it downstairs and spread my weak old rubbers and splooge all over the couch and carpet in the living room. The first room you see when you enter the house. Welcome home, mum and dad. They didn't tell me about it for years to spare me the embarrassment. When my dad finally did tell me, he was laughing his butt off. But my mother was apparently not pleased. In conclusion, my childhood dog spread my used rubbers all over my parents' living room. When I was in 8th grade, I was staying the night at my friend's house, and it so happened that one of my favorite movies, A Christmas Story, was going to be playing on TBS. My family didn't have cable, and I knew everyone would enjoy watching it on Christmas at my house, so I asked my buddy if we could record it onto VHS so I could take it home. He grabbed a blank tape from his dad's office, popped it in the VCR, and we recorded Ralphie and his Christmas shenanigans. The following day, I went home and told my parents and siblings that I had a copy of the movie. They were ecstatic, and we all agreed to watch it the following week on Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve rolls around, and my parents, brothers, about five and eight years old, sister, seven years old, and myself gather around the TV to watch the movie. I rewind the tape to the beginning and press play. For the next three seconds, although it felt like an hour, my entire family and I watched a woman sucking a large male organ before it quickly cut to a Christmas story. We had obviously taped over one of my friend's dad's adult flick tapes. Nobody flinched. I looked at my parents, who had these bizarre frozen smiles as if nothing had happened and everything was right with the world. My brother and sister continued watching the TV but had looks of bewilderment on their faces as they tried to process what they'd seen while simultaneously trying to enjoy the beginnings of A Christmas Story. Nobody in my family has ever mentioned this event. I'm 30 years old now, and A Christmas Story is no longer part of our family Christmas tradition. Oh sweet lord, we've missed out on many great awkward family moments now that the age of the cassette tape has been and gone. We shall miss you, old faithful. When I was 15, I was just constantly in the mood all the time. I'd also never seen a male member other than my own or in an adult flick. These two things are important. So I have my group of friends and one of my friends, who we'll call D, had older, cooler brothers. So they would get us adult flicks and we would trade with each other every so often. After a while, I had a collection of about 8 or 9 skin flicks, all VHS, hidden in a garment bag which contained a suit I never wore in my closet. I also had acquired a male enlargening pump. I know, I know, laugh it up. Honestly, I thought it was small by comparison, but it was the kind that has a long cylinder and squeeze pump. This was also hidden in the garment bag along with rubbers and cigars. I just knew it was a genius hiding spot. Incorrecto. Come home from school one day with everything that was in the garment bag on the kitchen counter. Super busted. And my mum is freaking the frick out over the enlargening pump. It was like she'd found a severed head or something. She was mortified. She yells at me and says, wait till I tell your dad, and sends me up to my room. My dad comes home. I hear them talking, then I hear him ascending the stairs. I'm terrified. He opens the door with the biggest grin on his face, tells me not to worry about it, gives me my rubbers back, but says we have to throw the tapes and pump away. But he put them in a bag and put them on top of the garbage so I could retrieve them, and told me it was nothing, that I was a teenage boy, and that my mum would never understand. My mum thought I was the devil, though. When we were about five or seven years old, me and my brother discovered the similarities between ketchup and blood. Mum wasn't home yet, so we got some knives from the kitchen. All the ketchup we could find, cut some holes in our shirts for the knives, and staged a huge crime scene in the living room. 
We loved secretly watching the thrillers our parents used to see in the evenings from the living room door when we were believed to be in our beds, so he had some experience with a plausible scenario and put a lot of thought into it, creating a huge battle scene with blood on the walls, the couches, and of course, lots of ketchup on our motionless bodies in the center of the room. Mum kind of had a breakdown. You were a fricked up child. So when I was 16, I found out that who I thought was my dad was actually just my stepdad and not my real dad. Well, a sister I never knew about contacted me, and it turns out my real dad lived in a small town just 8 miles away from mine. Well, I met my sister and had her come over one day while my mum was at work. My mum came home early and when I introduced my sister, I introduced her as my girlfriend. The look on my mum's face was priceless. That is beautifully evil. I was around 14 and was pretty depressed, so my parents were on guard. One day, I woke up early with a runny nose, but being tired, I just went back to sleep. A few hours later, my mum is panicking as she wakes me up. My face was covered in blood due to a bloody nose and I looked like a corpse. I sneezed when I had a bloody nose once during the night, so there was blood splattered on my wall and pillow with blood all over at noon, while I was sleeping pretty heavily when my mum came to wake me up. I woke up because of the loud screaming going on in my room and scared the entire family by accident. When I was about 8 years old, I was going through our medicine cabinet like the little rascal I was and found one of my brother's old EpiPens, the epinephrine injector for use during a severe allergic reaction. I was curious about how it worked and figured it was like any other pin in that you clicked the top of your thumb and the needle came out the other end. Turns out the needle comes out of the end that you click and it ended up going right into my thumb. When my parents came upon me screaming my lungs out in the bathroom, the walls were painted with blood that I'd sprayed around getting the pen out of my thumb. Apparently, it was pretty grisly. (laughs) Haha, my brother did exactly the same thing with my EpiPen when he was like 11-ish, in the middle of a church service. The image of a screaming child spraying blood all over the congregation is just too gosh darn funny. I love it. I was young enough that I took supervised baths. My mum stepped out of the bathroom for just a few seconds and I thought it would be super funny to sink to the bottom and lie motionless. Mum didn't think it was nearly as funny when she came back in. Similarly, I was young enough to take supervised baths and was exhausted at the time. My mum stepped out and I instantly fell asleep, with my face in the water. I was dreaming and I knew it was hard to breathe. My mum came in screaming my name and my head shut up, slamming into the faucet. I was fine, but she put me to bed instantly. To this day, we don't know why, but toddler me decided one night to get out of bed, grab my toy hammer, walk to my parents' room, round the bed, and smack my sleeping dad in the face before dropping the hammer and returning to bed. He's still jumpy in his sleep. I fell out of a moving car when I was six. Luckily, I was in a car seat and landed in grass. How does this happen? One word. Jeeps. For some context, when I was about seven, I lost my cat. He just disappeared one day. Probably coyotes. But his favorite thing to do was sleep in my mum's bathroom sink. Also, my neighborhood is infested with cats because someone down the street never got hers fixed. So now for the real story. I was swinging on my porch swing, looking over into the bushes and saw a cat. It was laying down, eyes closed, mouth open. No wounds as far as I could see. It looked asleep. But it looked sick too, so to make it feel better, I picked the dead cat up, took it inside and placed it in the bathroom sink. Plus, I was feeling really lonely after my first cat disappeared. I thought my mum would let me keep this one. In conclusion, my mum walked in on me petting a dead cat I had placed in the bathroom sink. I find this morbidly adorable. A child with little understanding of the concept of death attempting to tend to an animal's corpse. I think that definitely would have left a mark on me as a parent though. I think that I'd be more moved than traumatized. My mum got my sister and I our first set of makeup when we were 11 and 15, respectively. We ran to the bathrooms to try and figure it out and immediately decided that the best course of action was to paint bruises and wounds all over our faces. Fake fight sounds and screaming, then run to our mother's office area appearing like we needed to go to the hospital. It worked. She turned about as white as a sheet and screamed before we collapsed into laughter. We weren't allowed to have makeup again until we were adults and bought it for ourselves. I haven't, but my little sister used to hold her breath when she threw a fit, used to scare my mum to death. My dad said, eh, she'll start breathing when she passes out. My daughter threatened me with this. I looked at her with a bored look until she went down. I didn't catch her or anything. She came to and realized daddy wasn't being bullied. The first movie I saw with my ex was Knocked Up. At the time, there was awkwardness because we'd accidentally had unprotected fun the week before. It turned into a big joke between us and I bought her the movie for Christmas. Mum asked me, 
What did you get Jen for Christmas? And without hesitating or thinking, I said, Knocked up. She was driving and almost wrecked the car. This happened the summer after my senior year of high school. After a long night of drinking, I came home and apparently felt the desire to spew. My parents live on the third floor. I live on the second and have a bathroom on my floor. For some reason, I turned the fan on when I went into the bathroom, which is kind of loud and my parents' room is pretty much right above the bathroom. So I spewed hard, mostly in the toilet at first. I got hot and really sweaty when I'm spewing, so naturally I stripped down to my boxers. I then somehow managed to spew all over myself. Well, that's unacceptable to drunk me, so I decided to take a shower to clean up. Never managed to turn the water on. Next thing I know, I'm getting woken up by my mother screaming bloody murder, crying profusely. Apparently, I passed out in the tub. The fan woke up my mother in the middle of the night, so she came to investigate and found me barely dressed, covered in my own spew, passed out in the bathtub with, as she says, my eyes rolling in the back of my head. She thought I was dead. I would say that was a bit traumatizing for her. In conclusion, my mum found me passed out, covered in my own spew, in the bathtub, and thought I was dead. I should note for our listeners that even saying the more commonly accepted and medically correct terms for spew can get us in trouble with YouTube, which is why I had to say spew so many times instead. Spew. When I was in kindergarten, I made a friend while at school. We really hit it off, and she said she had a big bag of Halloween candy at home and offered to share it with me. It was a fairly short walk to her place from school and from her place a short little walk home. So I head over to her place and completely forget to tell my parents where I went after school. I completely lose track of time. We ate candy and played video games. Her family must have thought my parents knew where I was. We played board games and ate dinner and I didn't go home until after nine. I remember getting home, walking through the front door and being greeted by the sight of my parents, both completely in tears on the phone with the police. I immediately realized what I did wrong, and I thought for sure I was going to be grounded forever. They weren't mad, though. They were just overjoyed that I was okay. A bunch of bear hugs and tear-filled expressions of parental affection later, I felt terrible. They must have thought I was dead. I was missing for over six hours. Every single one of their friends was out looking for me. I'm such a butthole. In conclusion, when I was in kindergarten, I disappeared for over six hours on my way home from school and didn't tell anyone where I was, so I could play video games and eat candy. When I was younger, my parents took one of my toys away from me, a brand new mother fricking Hulk toy. This made toddler me angry, so I did the only thing to do. I crapped in their room. I crapped all over their bed and floor. I reminded my mum about it, and she said I didn't just crap, but diarrhea'd. I sprayed diarrhea all over my parents' bedroom. When I was young, maybe around five or six, I was trying to find Christmas presents in closets or under beds, but instead I found a crap load of prophylactics and adult funtime toys. At the time, I didn't know what they were, so I opened up the box of what I thought were balloons and started to run down the stairs with what I thought was a sword, or a vibrating toy, and trying to blow up the balloons. I then ran into the room where my parents were and started talking about how I finally found my Christmas presents. My parents still talk about that today. After being blown for the first time, I rushed home to tell my best friend in the world. I got on Facebook and told him every dirty detail. I then left my Facebook open when I went to shower. My mom, just arriving home, went to check her email and learned about my new adult adventures. My mom is the kind of person who doesn't believe children or teenagers should be allowed any privacy whatsoever, for their own good. I was really dumb and used to log all of my aim convos because who would want to read every single line hoping to find something salacious? Well, my mom, I guess, because she did and buried in an aim log was me telling someone that I really loved going down on him and couldn't wait to do it again. But she didn't tell me she read it, she told everyone else in my family. My siblings, my aunts, all of them. And all of her friends. She's a gossip and she lives on that crap. So everyone but me knew she'd found this, as well as some exposed photos a guy had sent me. Instead, she just carted me off to confession, bought me one of those Bibles for teens, and told me I needed to get right with Jesus. It wasn't until years later I discovered the depths of her invasion of privacy. Oh well. My dad was fixing this huge closet one day. The closet was very old and had an extremely heavy door. The problem with that closet was that the door hinges were loose. At that time, I was about eight or nine years old, and my little sister was fooling around inside the closet while my dad was trying to tighten the hinges. He told me to get her out of there since she was just bothering him, and as I lifted up, the gosh darn closet door fell down on my pinky toe. It's all a blur, but I clearly remember me running down the hallway screaming my heart out while my sock got pumped with blood. After that, I passed out, waking up a while later in the back seat of my father's car with a crap load of toilet paper around my foot. My dad didn't say a word. 
When I arrived at the hospital, I got put under and operated. Fortunately, they managed to put my pinky toe back where it belonged. I'm guessing my dad felt very shameful after the incident. However, mum told me a couple of years ago that after I lost my toe, he immediately put it inside his mouth because he had read that that was the only way to save the toe from dying or something like that, and drove to the hospital with the toe in his mouth. I don't think he'll forget that. Ugh, this one makes me cringe just thinking about it. When I was 13, I was about as randy as you would expect a 13-year-old kid to be. The problem was, I was living in a very religious household at the time. My parents go through phases. This was their religious phase. Luckily for me, it was while I was going through puberty. And my parents had an ironclad parental filter on the internet, so adult flicks were out of the question. So I decided to draw my own adult material. And I'm a pretty gosh darn good artist when it comes to drawing things that are right in front of me to look at. So what I'd do is I'd take magazine pictures of women who had relatively little clothing on and just edit out the clothing I was drawing. Well, of course, my parents found my stack of drawings eventually, which isn't too bad, I guess. My dad even said uncomfortably that I had some talent at drawing and should pursue it just with a different subject matter. Here's the part that makes me cringe. My mother decided that one of the drawings looked too much like her. It was purely coincidental. It was literally a picture out of an advertisement that I had copied to the best of my ability. And she asked me, very uncomfortably, if I fantasized about her. Ladies and gentlemen, not much in the world makes you want to crawl into a hole and die more than when your own mother thinks you've been fantasizing about her. And I have cringed so far into my office chair that I'm in danger of becoming the world's worst transformer. Oh gosh, please God no, I want this story to be fake. You know how your parents told you to never run with scissors? Well, I didn't listen. I was running through the house like an idiot, and I tripped on the scissors, and they went through my front teeth, and jammed in the back of my throat. Blood sprayed out of my mouth and my nose. It frightened my parents so much that my mum passed out, and when she fell, her face was smashed on the floor. So I had to get three stitches, and my mum had $30,000 worth of face surgery, so I figuratively and literally traumatized my parents. One time during my sophomore year in college, I'd been feeling guilty for not seeing my family very often, even though they lived 20 minutes away, so I decided to take them out for dinner. Since I had some extra cash, I thought it would be nice to take them somewhere better, so we all went to Black Angus. I thought it would be cool to bring my boyfriend that I'd been dating seriously for six months. No one in my family normally does this. I find out later that my dad was scared crapless that I was going to tell the family that I was either pregnant or getting married at the dinner. Well, crap. When I was two or three, my parents had me in the backyard. I was running around and generally being a small child. You know how it is. Apparently, I saw something cool on the ground, and like most children, my first reaction was to put this fancy thing in my mouth. The fancy thing was bird crap. My mom screamed and took a hose to my mouth. Bonus, I'm a huge mysophobe now. I call it Stunt Baby. My four-month-old standing on my hand as I balance him and let people take pictures. I hated school in fourth grade. Terrible teacher, a few bratty other students, made going to school miserable. So I loved any excuse to get out of school for all or even part of the day, even if it was a doctor's appointment. One day, for some reason, my doctor's appointment was cancelled. I was having none of this. I barricaded myself in my bedroom, no lock on the door, just my desk chair and some other stuffed animals as a blockade, and screamed that I would rather die than go to school. My mum was freaked out, crying hysterically and everything. My poor dad having to deal with two hysterical women or girls at once. The next day, I had an emergency session with mum's therapist. I traumatized my mother once, both times when I was about three years old. The first time, we were walking through the botanic gardens and there was a wedding taking place. Apparently, the bride was a large lady and I piped up in my piercing little voice, Mummy, look at that fat bride! My mother grabbed me under one arm and ran away. She thinks the bride didn't hear, but she's certain some of the guests did. The second time I traumatized her, she took me to her work one day, and I met one of her colleagues. He was from Ghana and had very dark skin. Apparently I said, Mummy, look at that dirty man. Mum said she just wanted the floor to swallow her up, but the guy handled it with exceptional grace and just laughed and said, Don't worry, at least I can't blush. Yeah, I'm surprised I wasn't left at an orphanage after those two episodes. I now have kids of my own who are determined to give me my comeuppance. When my mum was dropping me off at preschool, I saw the father of a girl in my class who was black. I tugged on his shirt and asked him, Excuse me, sir, are you Susie's dad? I sure am, why? At this point, my mother was terrified to know what my next statement would be. You have the same dark skin as she does. My mum was about to die until he responded, Yeah, it runs in my family, while laughing.
When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories, linked at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot, linked in the description too. Either way, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.